Hey guys, Mark from Northeast Bathurst, and how you doing? I do have some clips I just put together. I got about 10 to 12 minutes of some fishing clips from Lake Champlain. It was actually the last Friday we were there. And just a, a jerkbait fishing, um, some of the decent fish we caught. And um, I just thought I'd do this intro to that. And so here's your intro, and I'm, stay tuned for like 10 to 12 minutes of some clips. And then I'll come back and I'll kind of show you the baits I was using, okay? So I'll see you soon. Mark out. Hey guys, Mark from Northeast Bass Fishing. How you doing? Uh, today I'm working on my recap of my Lake Champlain trip, which was last week, uh, May 4th through the 11th. Uh, fished all week with my buddy Kenny. It's always up there with my buddies Mike and Dale and uh, Kyle and Matt. And uh, we just had an awesome week. And this is actually, actually, this is the last day of fishing. Uh, the Friday, the 10th, was our last day of fishing. Now, we have already fished the whole week. I didn't get the camera out, and um, it was a lot of jerkbait fish. And that's the first one of this Friday. And as you can see, I never wear gloves. My hands were killing me. We were fishing 12, 13-hour days. Um, two of the days, the weather was really bad. Uh, the first Sunday we were there, the weather was really terrible. Like, we bagged it after about, we still made it like six or seven hours, but we were like drenched and soaked through, and we just, and it was windy and cold. Um, this is Friday where it was, was sunny and, uh, and, and that little bit of breeze. And that was really, for us, the key, uh, especially for that jerkbait bite, which was probably 90, 85 to 90% of our bass were caught on the, uh, the, the jerkbait. And, Lots of different jerk baits. Now, right now, I think I'm throwing one of the Mega Bass perch um, patterns here, and this is just we're just fishing in the inland sea, um, kind of point hopping, just working the shorelines. And when you had, uh, when we had sun, like you can see there, and we had that little bit of chop. When it was calm, it was a little little slower. When we had that little bit of chop, the jerk bait bite was really really good. And uh, as I said, I would say probably 85 to 90 percent of our bass for the whole week um, were caught uh, just throwing a jerk bait. And as I said, I threw the Mega Bass Jerk, the Division 110, a lot. I threw the Berkeley Stunna a lot. I pulled out some of my older Lucky Crafts I hadn't thrown in a while, caught fish on those. Um, I'm trying to think. I I, I was throwing the the new um, the Smithwick, the FX series, which I lost to <laughs> to a pike. Um, <clears throat> soon in the first day. So there's a decent smallie. So, you know, it's pretty, I don't want to say simple fishing, but pretty basic jerkbait fishing. Um, you know, throwing the jerkbait up, you're fishing, you know, this, you know, the water in the inland sea is very clear. You know, you're talking like 50 to 52 degree water, I think we found most of the time. Uh, we're sitting in probably anywhere from six to 10 feet, throwing up, you know, I'm throwing a lot straight out from the boat. My buddy Kenny's kind of throwing to both sides of the boat. Sometimes chucking the, the jerk bait out to the right side of the boat to the deeper water would produce fish, and that would help us find them. <clears throat> Excuse me. But, um, you know, pretty basic jerk bait fishing. You know, long casts. Um, I'm using light line, six to eight pound test uh, fluorocarbon, and, um, you know, just getting that cadence down of, uh, you know, getting that bait down a few jerks of and uh, just letting it sit and a lot of times out they would hit it on the pause and um i still think yeah i think that looks like that mega bass jerk bait there um as usual i'm doing the voiceover because you guys would just hear wind <laughs> if i didn't um but as i said you know earlier our our hands we were we were worn out this day you know but you're going to go fishing of course so i think we you know we were up early but i don't think we got on the water till about 8 30 9 o'clock we fished till like four and then we were just shot and we just went back to the house and had dinner and we're kind of packing up to head out the next day the next morning to get out of the house but uh you know we still managed to find a few areas uh where there was some uh some fish, uh, some active bit, uh, fish, you know, earlier in the week, uh, Monday and Tuesday, we were, you know, those were like, I don't know if, I don't know if it was, I think between Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, they were all hundred fish practically. I think the one day was like an 80 fish day and the other two days were like hundred fish days. They were just all over the jerk bait. <clears throat> the wind and the conditions with the sun was just right. I can see him tail walking across the top of the water there. But, I, you know, I didn't want to show you guys, you know, 
four days of jerkbait fishing, that would get a little boring. Um, but you get the idea. I like to, as you see, I like to throw my jerkbaits on a spinning setup. That's just one of my, I think that's my, my FX rod there, that medium rod, seven footer. Maybe a, maybe a seven three, I forget exactly. Um, but that right there, I believe is that Berkeley Stunna right there. That's one of the colors I wanted. And after a while of catching fish, I would just try different colors just to see, you know, what they liked. And, and in my opinion, if they're on a jerkbait bite, I don't really know how important color is. You know, if you're fishing with another guy and, you know, he's out fishing you 10 to 1, you can say, okay, it must be a color thing. But I caught them on lots of different brands, so lots of different color patterns. You know, traditionally they like the perch pattern up there, but, you know, we would we would throw that jerk bait around in these areas and you'd have schools of 10, 20 perch come up behind the jerk bait. So you knew perch were around and you have to assume that they're probably, you know, the smallies are probably munching on them. So the perch, you know, matching the hatch is a good idea, just throwing that perch pattern. But we also, um, you know, also along with all of these smallmouth, there's a lot of northern pike. If you like to fish for northern pike, I highly recommend Lake Champlain. <laughs> um, I did lose, I did lose three mega bass jerk baits. I lost um, a couple of stunners. I lost uh, a rogue. I lost uh, two lucky crafts. I, so I probably lost seven or eight whatever jerk baits. I lost a uh, <clears throat> a, a chatter bait to a pike. Um, so the, the pike are very active. They're in the same areas as the smallmouth and the largemouth. And um, and they're eating jerk baits and chatter baits very well. So uh, you know it's just something you got to deal with. But you know when you catch a huge pike, it's kind of cool too. Uh, the problem with a pike is that they do tend to destroy the hooks on your jerk baits um, because they do that that roll into the net if you net them, and uh, they just get all tangled up in the net. And then you know getting the, the the hooks out of the net, the hooks out of the fish. You know you tend to. Them. So there's a decent smallie right there. Decent smallie. I think the one day, probably the best day, I think we had six or seven over four on the same day. Uh, the biggest fish of the week, uh, my buddy Kenny had a 623 largemouth on a chatterbait. I think that was Thursday night. Uh, we had stayed out kind of late. We, we actually were heading back and we stopped at an area. We started fishing it and we were just, we were just slamming them. And, uh, you know, we thought the four pounders we caught were nice. And then he hits this, you know, six, two, three monster largemouth, you know, when it was, you know, eight 30 at night, starting to get dark out. But, um, you know, we caught a lot. We, I don't think we caught anything in the five. I mean, I caught a largemouth that was four, nine, three, but we didn't have anything that really weighed five. Everything was, that was that one big six and a ton of four plusers on uh, either jerk baits or chatter baits. I think I might have caught one fish during the week on a Ned, and um, and really, really, that was it. Uh, we were even in an area where we were, you know, it was like fish after fish, smallmouth on jerk baits, and we said, oh, let's try a spinner bait through here. Nothing. Let's try a chatter bait through here. Nothing. Uh, anything else you threw there? Nothing. The minute you throw the jerk bait, they bit it. So they were on that jerk bait bite they were not interested i don't know I, I could not believe how bad the spinner bait bite was with some of the windy days we had um not that the wind was ever really too bad to be honest with you for, as for a week of fishing on champlain all in all other than the two days when it rained and especially the sunday that that may 5th may 5th the weather was really bad you know um if i was up there for a longer time we probably wouldn't even have gone out but since we were there for a week you know you're gonna go fishing um and then I believe it was um, Monday. It might have been um, Monday and Tuesday. Might have been were probably the nicest days overall. And then I think Wednesday we might have had some rain again. But it was it was fishable rain. It wasn't like you know cold and rainy and blown in your face and like it was on Sunday. Um, but we were just this is it. You know, casting out that jerk bait, getting that cadence down, three or four jerks, get it down to that death range and. For me especially, just let it sit for a second. And a lot of times they would come and, and clobber it on that, uh, on that pause. And uh, as I said, uh, I don't think it really mattered. You know, if, if, if you like throwing a Lucky Craft, you were going to catch them. If you like throwing a Mega Bash, you were going to catch them. If you wanted to throw a Berkeley Stunda, you were going to catch them. They were on the jerkbait bite uh, those days. And when you had the right, um, those right conditions of that perfect wind, that sun... Um, it just seemed to really get them going. Um, if it was too calm, it was a little tougher. 
still caught him, but it was a little tougher. There's a nice one right there. And I think I can't, can I see that? I think that's one of those mega bass. Um, I forget the, I forget what that color is, but what I'm going to do guys is I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to, I have all these clips together, which I think are like 10, 10 or 12 minutes or so just to show you some of the fish. And then I'm going to do, um, you know, something in the studio here just to kind of show you the baits I was using and just talk a little bit about it, you know, from that standpoint. But I wanted to, I wanted to edit these clips first and show them to you. Um, and as I said, I didn't want, you know, five days of, <clears throat> of jerkbait fishing, which, <laughs> you know, if, if I had a, a two hour video of fishing clips, that would get boring for you. Um, and really the two days when it was bad out, I wasn't filming the other day, I, the first day, Saturday, I, I didn't bring the camera out with me at all. And then when I was going to, I was going to film on Wednesday and Thursday, the one day I just never set the camera up and, or then it rained. That was the other rain day. And then Thursday, I was all ready to film, and uh, I left the SD camera, <laughs> all, the, all the SD cards in the uh, truck, and uh, I was like, forget it. Let's just go fishing, you know, because you really want to go fishing. So I just thought I'd show you those clips of the fish. And uh, here's our, just, this is our, we were in the inland sea driving around. Just throw you some, show you a few clips of the lake here of us driving around the boat back to, um, back to uh, an area we could, I think we went around Hog Island there for a little while. But like I said, at this point, you know, it was probably around three o'clock. We'd fished from, you know, eight or nine o'clock till around three. And as I said, we were, we were, we were shot. You know, everything, it's, it's awesome to go up there and it's great to fish, but it really does wear you out. You know, when you, when you fish, you know, 12, 13 hour days, you're catching a lot of fish, you know, your hands, you know, your, your hands are beat up. So it does wear you out. I know everybody, I know people, you know, might not understand how, you know, how rough it is on your, on your body to catch a lot of fish. <laughs> so, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I figured I'd just finish it up with a little boat ride and uh, stay tuned. Now I'll, I'll, I'll see you in the studio and give you, give you a few more tips on what I did later. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed those clips. Um, and as I was saying, um, great week of fishing. Uh, we were there May 4th through the 11th, um, staying up in the Allberg area. Rented a house, six of us together in the house and uh, three boats, and we just had a fantastic week of fishing. Uh, the weather, we got out, um, sometimes when we, you know, Saturday, the first day is a travel day, we may get there later, we may not be go, able to get into the house later. Um, but the fact we got, I think we kind of all got up there around one o'clock. We could actually get on the water. Um, I think probably to about, I think we got six or seven hours in that first Saturday, which was nice. So we caught a few, even the first day. And then Sunday, we all went out early, but the weather was, that was the miserable day of the week. Uh, cold, rain, and the wind blowing the rain in your face, no matter where you went. A lot of times you can hide, like in the Albrook Pass or some different coves or things you can hide in. There was nowhere, nowhere to hide that day from the weather. I think we... Uh, my buddy Kenny and I made it till about one o'clock. We said, the heck with this. Let's get out of here. We were, we were soaked. Um, it wasn't fun. You know, we catch a fish here and there, but, um, it wasn't, the fishing wasn't worth us being out there. We, we knew we had the whole week. We wanted to go back and dry out and, you know, and have something to eat. So we kind of called it early at like one o'clock that day. Went back to the house and chilled out. It rained that night uh, on and off. It was still raining Monday when we got up. But the rest of the week was pretty good. We had one other rainy day, and I don't remember if it was Monday or if it was Thursday. There was one day it was rainy, but we could still fish. It wasn't like it was still warmer out. The rain was on and off. It wasn't heavy rain, really. A couple times it was a little heavier, but the fishing was still pretty good. Um, it was just more pleasant out there. It wasn't as cold. So um, for a week on Champlain, the weather really was pretty nice, um, especially I think Tuesday and Wednesday was really nice. Friday was nice. Um, but the clips you just saw <clears throat> were from Friday. Um, the, the rainy days, I didn't bring the camera out. I didn't bring it out Saturday when I first got there. The other day I wanted to film, I forgot the SD cards in the, in the, uh, in the truck. I didn't go back to get them. So, um, but as I said on the video, if, it, for you guys to watch, you know, five days of fishing uh, on video would probably be pretty boring. Um, but it was a great week of fishing. We caught a lot of four pounders. I think the one day between us, we had six or seven four-pounders that one day over four. Um, my biggest was a 493 largemouth on a chatterbait. My buddy Kenny had a 623 largey on a chatterbait. Great fish. Um, just 
you know, I mean, if when you're catching, you know, three pounders all day, it's fun. Um, and then you throw in that four pounder in there, here and there. It's pretty cool. And uh, we caught lots of pike. We did lose quite a few jerk baits uh, and some chatter baits to those uh, toothy critters because there are some monster pike in the in Champlain so it's just it's kind of part of the game you just deal with it you know you're going to lose some of your your favorite uh, mega bass jerk baits or whatever you're throwing um but I, that's what I wanted to kind of do this wrap up and just finish it off showing you what what I was doing as you can see on the video and as I've said many times you guys know that I like to throw a jerk bait on a spinning setup and I'm usually I had three setups to one had eight pound line uh this one has eight um, this is just an ardent spinning uh, reel, an Abu Garcia uh, Veritas eight foot medium rod. And this um, this perch, this is one of the perch. I think this is that matte perch from Mega Bass. This was great. Any perch color uh, from any really any company, but uh, the Mega Bass perch was great. This one is I'm lucky I didn't get this one, lose this one to a pike. Caught a ton on this. Um, I think this is, as I said, eight pound fluorocarbon throwing it out there um you know jerk the uh, jerk bait down three or four times get it to that that depth and let it sit and they'd hit it uh the one day uh, or the two days that we i think had 100 fish days they were all over the jerk bait and they wanted nothing else really because uh, there were places where they were ganged up and we were catching a lot and we'd try other baits wouldn't touch it you go back to the jerk bait they'd bite it so they were they were keyed on that jerk bait bite and I, what I was, we were shocked um, that the spinnerbait bite was so, you know, I had, I caught zero fish and there was some wind. Um, and in areas where I've caught them on spinnerbaits, I could not get, I could not get a, 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 a sniff on the uh, spinnerbait. The chatterbait was really good. There was a few areas where the chatterbait was killer. But of course, all they wanted was the chatterbait. Um, this is another color. I don't remember what this one is called. You get you uh, mega bass experts may may remember what this one has got that like that that greenish back and it's like that crayfish i think this was one of those respect series ones i forget did very well with this i tied that on the last day and caught some on there that was a good one and uh this is that fx uh, rod i think but I, I couldn't remember what this was seven two was it seven three or i don't remember let me look oh where is it Oops, it's, uh, ooh, I'll read it upside down. It's seven foot medium. I couldn't remember if it was seven or seven three. Seven foot medium. And this is, this is six pound uh, floral, six pound. <clears throat> but I get a lot of bites with that six pound. But you also, um, if you could tell even from the video there, when I'm throwing that six pound, even that eight pound line, it's not like I'm going to jerk bait them and horse them up into the boat. We use the net a lot, um, let the fish run a lot, um, if you do, you know, you do lose some, you get some, you know, big, big pike on there. They can, you know, they can chomp your line in half when you're using that, 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 uh, that thin line. But, you know, as we say, that's, that's kind of the price of doing business up there this time of year. You know, you're going to lose some, some baits. Um, I did get, I did order, I have one in the boat. I did order another one. This is that, that, um, that one I've been talking to you guys about, that Rogue, that FX series Rogue. And this is that uh, northern light color. This has been great for me this spring. And I had it tied on. I wanted to try it on Champlain. And I think about an hour into day one, the northern pike stole it. I only had one. So that was gone for the whole week. So I did get two more from Lurinette. It came the other day. So <clears throat> I just wanted to show you that quick. That, that northern light is really, really good. And what I did, let's see if I got it here. I wanted to get... Um, I also grabbed that perfect tent, or I'm sorry, the FX series. Uh, this is that violent cream. I grabbed another one of those and you guys can check out my other video on these that I did, but I just grabbed another one of them. And I believe this is the, uh, the violet chartreuse. Yeah. Which is very, is a good one too. These are good. Try them out. If you haven't tried them, they suspend nice. They throw well. They've got good hooks. Um, it's a nice bait and they have the, um, the perfect 10 rogue, the one, the deeper diver, and they had it. They do have it in that northern light color, but it was out of stock. So when it comes in stock, I'm going to get it. But this is that violet chartreuse in it. I wanted to get the violet. So if you guys haven't, I'll even show it to you. If you guys haven't seen the Perfect 10, if you're looking for a deeper diving jerkbait, this is, a, this, is a, this is one you might want to be interested in trying. It's a bigger profile. Bigger profile bait. 
but that'll get you down to about 10 feet on, on uh, fluorocarbon, light floral. So if those bass are still holding deep, I know, at least for me in the northern part of the country, in New Hampshire, it seems like that jerkbait bite is kind of starting to fade a little. They're now on beds, as you'll see in another video, because I went out the other day and it was all sight fishing. But, um, you know, you can still grab a few here and there on these deeper lakes that are maybe a little cooler. The water hasn't warmed up quite as much yet. Um... I'd show you the Lucky Crafts I was using, but they're gone, and I haven't replaced them yet. Um, the Sparkly Stunna, it's that perch. I used that perch one. Those are the ones I lost. I used a couple other of these Stunnas and caught fish on. I just, I think they really would eat any jerkbait. I don't know if color was that important. Um, <clears throat> we just tend to, as a group, kind of to kind of stick with those perch patterns because there's so much perch in the bank. As I said in the video, you're throwing your jerk bait and you you after a while you know what's a bass kind of you know what the pike feel like and you know what the perch feel like and or when sometimes you get no bites but you feel these little bumps and you're looking down your jerk bait and there's just this school of like this mass of perch just following it up so you know when that perch is there that those bass are probably not far away but probably the the bait and when i lost it i was very sad um because it made it all the way till i believe Thursday, and then I lost it. It might even have been Friday, but I think it was Thursday. It was this Mega Bass, that Mega Bass shrimp color. This color was awesome for me. Um, I don't know. You know, it, it's it's hard to... I changed the hooks on it once or twice. It's, it's, it's hard to feel to... You know, when you catch hundreds, with no exaggeration, of bass, or over a hundred on one bait, and then you lose it, and you go, okay, well, you know, it's pretty good. I'll take a hundred plus fish on a bait and then replace it. Um, the one I had was all, it was, it had some serious uh, hook rash on it. It had pike. I mean, it survived pike after pike until one got it and it did not come back. But this, um, this mega best shrimp, I had never really thrown it much and I threw it up and it, it, it was outstanding. And that clear water, it does look somewhat perchy like, which probably helped. Um, but it just, it, it worked great. It worked great. To me, when I look at this bait, um, you know, it does look very perch-like. It's got that little bit of blue on the top. It seems more orangey on the bottom. It just, it matches that, that bait perfectly. And this one, this one was, uh, the best one for me. Uh, my buddy, uh, Ken was throwing the perch, regular perch plus one most of the time and was doing great on it. Caught a ton on that too. So, I mean, if I threw something different, I'm sure I would have probably done well, too. It seemed like they didn't really... I mean, I can remember at one point, I said, you know, let me try some of these other perch patterns I have. I pulled out a, a Lucky Craft perch, one of the the, the one that's... I, I can't remember the, the uh, model number, but it's not... It's one of the ones that are like nine nine ninety nine, like a Bass Pro. It's not like they're super expensive ones, but they're still nice. And it had a nice pe perch paint job. So let me try it. Throw it out. Boom. Four pound, four, I think it was a 414 small. I was like, okay. And then I think I lost it to like a pike like a half hour later. And it was like, oh, well, so much for so much for fishing with that bait. Um, but this shrimp color from Mega Bass, if you guys haven't tried this color, give it a shot. Give it a shot. I think it's great. This has become, this is now one of my favorite Mega Bass colors, the shrimp color. So I, I don't think they make it in a plus one or two. If they do, I will definitely get them. Um, I know when these, I remember when these came out. So I hope it doesn't become so limited that the you can't get them anymore. But I I, I grabbed it, grabbed one when I got home from my trip so I could uh, replace it because it's so good, it's so good. Um, but really, guys, that's kind of it. Uh, it was really just oh, I was throwing, I did I did get another um, of that that uh, that western and western clown. But then I get it, and I don't think this that was the one I was using. It, it kind of had stripes on it, almost was kind of perchy too, but it was like clown cause. I don't know what, I have to look back. I know I did a video on it. It might've been one of the respect series I got. It was, you guys might, that are better with the colors than I am from Mega Bass. It was like this clown, but it had like stripes on it. I don't remember when I, I thought I lost, I thought it was a clown that I lost just like this. But then I got it, I said, no, I, I got that one. <laughs> it was a different one. I'll have to look it up and let you know, but. Um, it was similar to this. I think it might have been one of the Respect series that came out that I got over the winter. Uh, but they were hammering that until a, a monster, huge pike stole it. And I think that was over the New York side the one day. And I was like, oh, well, so much for that one. Um, 
But that's it, guys. That's it. It was it was the perfect scenario for a good jerk bait bite. Water just getting up into those lower 50s. Perch were on the shoreline. The bass were moving up with the sun, warming up the rock. <clears throat> that wind hitting the bank. It wasn't too windy that it made it really unpleasant to fish. It was just enough of a chop that made the jerk bait bite good. So um, if if you if you're new to jerk bait fishing. If it's something you haven't done a lot, my recommendation is try it on spinning setup. You'll be able to cast further. Um, it's a lot easier on your elbow. You can use lighter line. That six and eight pound, and I know you can get seven pound floral, which is a good option too. Anything from that six to eight, I wouldn't go lower. I'm not, I, I can't believe I'm going four, for, or I'm sorry, for going six for me, which is crazy. <clears throat> Back in the day, I was always using 10, and that was mono. Um, but ever since I've gone to that six and eight, I definitely, definitely get more bites. And you're not, you're not, you're the, the fit is, if you're catching four and five pound fish, they're not breaking the line unless you have, you know, a nick in it, unless it's got teeth, like, <laughs> like a, like a pike. Um, but you know, really for the amount of fish we caught, the amount of casts we make to lose, um, you know, six or seven jerk baits in a week of fishing, it's really not too bad. You know, it, it just comes with the territory of of you know the pike and just getting a lot of bites uh but that's it guys that's it so if there's any questions let me know i know you've seen these me talk about these baits before um <clears throat> but i just thought i kind of you know finish this up with a little chat here in the in the uh, in the tackle shop just to kind of show you but that shrimp was great i would have loved to have thrown this this more often um <clears throat> if it didn't get stolen on day one by a toothy critter and you can never ever ever i don't think in any lake in the country go wrong with any of the mega bass um the berkeley stunners the lucky crafts uh, whatever jerk bait you like to throw in any kind of a perch pattern this matte um perch was awesome for me uh I, it looks great the fish uh, were clobbering it and um you know get yourself a spinning setup you know, a, a 3,000 size reel, six to eight pound fluoro, whatever jerk bait you like, use it and um, and try your different cadences. Get that bait down to a certain depth, pause it, see if they want you to rip it, see if they want you to pause it. For me personally, I know my buddy Kenny was ripping it more than I was. He was catching a ton of fish. I was letting it sit a little more. Um, every day is different. Some days they want it sitting, some days they want it a little, maybe ripping it a little more, but it was just. The fishing was just outstanding. I, I love going there. I love going to Lake Champlain. The fishing is just out, is just great. Um, if you want to catch northern pike, <laughs> have you you'll catch it. You can catch a hundred a day probably, just like the bass. If you really focus on them, um, we had we there were some areas we got into some really big largemouth, which was great. Um, I know I've done videos in the past. We had one day when the blade bait bite was pretty good, but that was it, one day only. The other days we'd get maybe one, maybe two. We get, kind of got away from it. Um, I think the one day, maybe Monday, I don't remember the days kind of all are blurred with together now for me, but there was one day early in the week where we had a pretty good blade bite, uh, blade bait bite. I think Kenny, my buddy Kenny had like eight or 10 in the boat before I got one. Then I started to, you know, kind of started to catch a few uh, <clears throat> he was hammering on the blade bait uh, but then we tried those areas again uh, a day or two later and got, wasn't really much going on so the jerk bait bite was as i said probably nine, 85 to 90 percent of all our fish i would say the chatter bait was the other the other you know 10 to 12 percent and you can say two percent on the on the on maybe blade baits and other little neds maybe but i didn't really throw a ned that much because they were just they were eating the, they were eating the jerk bait so why bother um but that's it so if there's any questions guys let me know um but um it was fun it's a, it's a great place if you ever have a chance to get up there and go fishing i highly recommend it um there's tons of uh you know vrbo houses and airbnbs you can rent there's hotels um there's lodges there's plenty of place to stay you know, supermarkets where you can, you know, we we're, we have a good setup where we um, we have a great chef. Uh, his name is Kenny. <laughs> He's also my fishing partner. And um, he goes and shops for all of us. Everybody chips in. And, um, you know, we don't, we really, I don't spend, I don't think really any of us do, 
spend a lot of money other than for the house, our gas, and uh, what we give Kenny for the food. Because if you go up there and you go out to dinner every night, you go out to lunch all the time, if you go out to breakfast, then your expenses really tend to add up. You know, if you bring your food and you cook, um, you'll eat better and you, you'll save a lot of money. Uh, I, I highly recommend doing it that way. And especially we're lucky that, you know, one of the uh, people in our group is an excellent chef. So uh, you know, that makes it nice too. So we all, we all have a, always have a great meal um, the night after, you know, by the time, by the time we're all back at the house and, and uh, either showered or just kind of chilling out on the couch and having dinner at nine, 10 o'clock sometimes because we fish all day. It's a great, it's great. It's great to have a nice meal like that and then get up and go fishing again. So if you ever have a chance to go up there, uh, I highly recommend it. But it was, it's another outstanding week. I can't say it enough. Um, it's just so much fun. The fishing is great. It's a good, a good time uh, with the guys hanging out and uh, having a good, having a bunch of laughs. So, um, so that's it, guys. That's it. Any questions on jerkbait fishing, any of the jerkbaits I showed you, let me know. Um, I'll, th I'll throw in a couple links here, but you guys all know where to buy mega bass baits and lucky craft baits and, and, uh, and on Lorna to get your, your rogues. Uh, if you haven't tried this, this Northern Lights, give it a shot. You'll like it. But that's it. So any questions, let me know. I appreciate you guys watching. Please uh, like and share the video. And if you're new to my channel, haven't subscribed, please do join the party. Okay. Almost to 2000. We're going to get there soon. All right. I'll see you guys soon. Mark out.